Hello everyone, this is Selic, and welcome to my Mining Turtle tutorial. This tutorial will be aimed at beginners, folks who have been interested in using the Mining Turtle but have either been too frustrated or too intimidated with the prospect of programming it. To start with, I'm going to go over some of the basic functions of the Turtle. Something you may or may not know is that the Mining Turtle is indestructible. Uh, it cannot be uh, burned in lava, and it cannot be exploded uh, by a creeper explosion. Also, uh, when you attach a pickaxe or whatever tool you attach to the mining turtle, the, the tool will not wear out. It will uh, keep going as long as you have the turtle. Also, one of the most important things you can do when you first get your turtle is set the turtle's name. If you do not set the turtle's name, any fuel you put into it, any programs you write for it, will be lost the moment you pick it up. So to set the, the name, we need to type label set and then we're going to call this thing the turtle nador ha, ha, ha. there we go and now we're going to give it some fuel and we're going to give it some coal it can take uh, coal lava and uh, more importantly it can take um, a charge from a charging station that is powered by EU. So once you get your um, EU producers up and running you can just stick a charge station um, up to a cable and then the turtle up to that charge station and uh, leave it there and it will charge uh, slowly but indefinitely. So let's go ahead and refuel this guy now. To do that we type in refuel. When we do that you see it consumes one coal from one stack. Well we don't want that. We want to have all of the fuel go into the turtle. So to do that we type in refuel all. It will consume all of the fuel. Now if you're ever curious about what the fuel level is for your turtle, all you have to do is uh, click on your turtle and then type in the refuel and it will show you the current fuel level. Another thing that you can do is uh, when you first get started, this is definitely a handy thing to be able to uh, excavate uh, material for you. You can stick it anywhere in the world and it will excavate a square size all the way down to bedrock. So to do that all you do is type in the word uh, excavate and then the size of the square. We'll do a, a small one here. And you'll see that he will go around and he will excavate uh, this 4x4 four four section all the way down to bedrock. Uh, when this thing fills up with inventory, it will come all the way back up here and dump all the inventory into the chest here and then uh, go back to where it was and uh, continue digging. So we're going to go ahead and take this guy. And now we're going to look into... Oh, it's getting dark. Let's go ahead and get rid of you. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, give it a simple program. We are going to um, teach this thing how to dig us a three by one branch mine. Um, and it will uh, go a certain distance, the distance that we specify. And then we're going to have it place torches and come back to where it started. To write the program, you simply right click the turtle and type in edit and then the name of your program, which we will call Branch. Then you'll be presented with a blank screen where you can start writing your code. One of the most important things to keep in mind when writing the code is that the code is case sensitive. So when you're referring to the Turtle API on the Computercraft Wiki that has the list of commands that the Turtle understands, you need to follow the capitalization patterns exactly, or the Turtle will not be able to execute the commands. Also, when you write your own functions, which is simply a block of code that you can reuse later on uh, in our code, you have to keep in mind the capitalization patterns that you use there as well uh, in order to execute it properly. And so the very first thing we will do is write a function. And to do that, you type in the word function, and then you name the function. We're going to call our function uh, digit. Now, though the language is case sensitive, it is not space sensitive. So what we will do is add spaces to uh, help us keep track of where we are in our functions, in our while loops, our for loops, and our if statements. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to write a while loop. And all that says is while something is true, do something. And so we're going to say while turtle.detect do. And what that says is while the turtle detects something in front of it, it detects a block in front of it, do something. What we're going to have it do is dig. And then we're going to have it sleep. And the reason we're going to have it sleep is that if you uh, mine a block that has a uh, sand or gravel block above it, we want to be able to allow it 
to fall down in front of the turtle again and then give it a chance to dig that out so that we will not leave any uh, sand or gravel behind as the turtle moves forward. Now we're going to go ahead and end that uh, loop and now we're going to have the turtle move forward. Now we're going to start a, uh, a new loop and this time we're going to use a compound statement. So we're going to say while turtle dot detect down or turtle dot detect up do. And you'll notice on both detect down and detect up there are uh, some capitalization um, patterns that you need to follow. So while either one of those are true, we want it to dig up and then dig down. We're going to end that loop and now we're going to end the function. Now what we want to be able to do is um, pass in some information to the program. We're going to tell it how far we want the branch to be mined. So to do that we need to declare a local variable call it run and we're going to write something to the terminal. So to do that we type in term.write and we'll prompt ourselves for the branch length. Now we're going to read that into our uh, run variables. We type in uh, run equal read and now we're going to loop through it. So to do the loop you say for i equal 1 to run do. And now what we want it to do is while um, for that length that we set we want it to dig. So we'll say dig it and now we'll say end. Now what that will do is that will um, dig us a nice 3 by one t tunnel uh, for the specified length. But we don't want it to just do that. We also want it to um, play some torches for us. So to do that we're going to write another function. We're going to call it uh, place torch. Um, so now what we want to, it to do is um, it's going to be sitting up one uh, high block off the ground. And so we want it to go down. We're going to have it go back and you'll uh, understand why we have it go back in a moment. Uh, now we're going to say uh, select. And what this does is it selects a item in the inventory slot you uh, specify. And so the 16th slot is this bottom corner slot here. And so it will select that and we'll place our torches there. And then we will say turtle dot place up. So we'll place the torch above it. And then we'll say turtle uh, forwards, forward, and then turtle dot up. So it will go back to the place where it started. And we'll end that function. Now we're going to need a few more variables uh, to complete this. Uh, and we're just going to call it uh, J and K. Now I'm getting ready to do a little math. So if math hurts your brain, you can just uh, basically ignore what I, what I tell you and just copy what I do. Uh, we're going to use uh, a modulo um, expression. So we're going to say k equal i minus 1 and then j equal mod, sorry, k mod 10. And then we will say uh, if, this is our if statement, so if j is 1, then. So it's a little bit different than the while loop. It uses then instead of do. And so uh, if j equal 1, then we're going to say place torch, and then end. Okay, so that will place the torch, and then it will uh, continue digging for that loop. Now, um, what we want to do as the program stands now, it's going to go all the way to the end and stop. But we don't want it to do that. We want it to turn around when it gets to the end. So to do that, we're going to say uh, turtle dot down. And um, because the, um, the turtle, the way it's programmed, it will not place the torch at the very, very end. It will start at the beginning and, and uh, not place it at the end. We want to go ahead and have it uh, select just in case. I'm a paranoid person. Uh, select 16 again, and we'll say turtle dot uh, place up. 
and then we're going to have a turnaround. Turtle dot turn right. Have it turn again. There we go. All right, so it'll be facing um, the direction it needs to head. And now we're going to add another for loop. So for i equal 1 to run do. And then we're just going to have it move forward. And we're going to end that. And that should be it. So let's take a look at that. We may have some errors. Most of the time, the first time you write a program, you will have errors. So oh, it's dark again. All right, so let's uh, go ahead. Let's give it some torches as well. Let's see here. There we go. Before we run the program, we have to make sure that the turtle is one block in. So it needs to start with a block uh, to its right or its left. So to do that, we'll set it there and put our torches back in. Now to run the program, we simply type the name of the program, and then we will give it the length. We'll have it go 10. We'll see what it does here. All right, so it places the first torch, and it will go all the way down 10 blocks, and hopefully come all the way back again. Now you'll notice that as it digs the block in front of it, it does pause momentarily to allow for anything that might uh, fall down in front of it. All right, it's almost at the end there. All right. Nice. Came all the way back to the start, ready to dig another tunnel. Uh, so the next thing we will do is we will be digging out a 3x3 three three, uh, tunnel that we can use to uh, have our branch mines go up and down. So uh, let's get to that next. So to write our next program that will hollow out a 3x3 three three tunnel for us, uh, we will type edit and then we'll name it 3tunnel. Uh, now we're going to use the same digit function that we uh, had written before. So we'll type in digit. And we'll have our while loop again. So we'll have it dig in front of us and then sleep momentarily. And then we'll end that. Have it move forward. And then another while loop. So turtle dot uh, detect down or turtle dot detect up do. Turtle dot dig up. Turtle dot dig down. End and end. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that function uh, in a loop. So we need to go ahead and um, declare a local variable called run. Prompt us for a uh, bit of information. And then read that information in. And now we will set up a another for loop. So we're going to have for i uh, equal 1 to run do. So what we want to do is right off the bat, we want to run the digit function. And now we're going to have it turn left. And dig it again. And now we will have it turn. We'll have it turn right. Have it turn right again, so we'll turn completely around. And now we'll have it move forward one block and uh, dig it again. And now we want it to turn completely around again. and move forward one block. There we go. And then turn to the right so it should be uh, where it needs to be facing to start the next part of the loop. So we'll say turn right. All right, let's end that. And uh, let's give it a shot here and see what it looks like. Okay, so we'll type in three tunnel. Type in the tunnel length. We'll just go ahead and make this 5. So it should turn now. Very good. And it starts to loop over. Excellent. There's one other thing I wanted to show you. 
Come here. Let's see here. Okay, let's put it back up. And uh, I wanted to let you see what it looked like to have an error in your program. So we're going to bring up our three tunnel program again. And uh, let's just introduce an error down here um, in our, our right command. We're going to take away that um, extra ending quotation mark, save that, and exit. So we're going to type in three tunnel, and you'll see that we have an error. Now, what you can uh, notice about the error, one of the most important things, is on the first line, the very last uh, section there, is the number. And that number 15 is the line that your error is on. So if you're uh, trying to debug a program, you can look at that line and then go in. And obviously, you have an error message there that makes sense. A lot of times, error messages don't make sense. But thankfully, this one does. We have an unfinished string. So we're going to go back into our three tunnel. Go down to line 15. You see the line number on the bottom right. And we see here line 15, we need to finish that string. Save it, exit, and it will run with no problems now. So five, and there it goes. Well, that will do it for uh, today's tutorial. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a lot. And uh, I hope you have a fun time with your mining turtle.